And so for today's big idea is we're going to uh, set up two very important aspects of our Google account. Previously we created Google Plus, which is our which is a great social network to use to get traffic. How many of you since last time have logged in again to Google Plus? So if you didn't, minus ten points. You want to you want to use it, you want to log in to Google Plus and uh, I can tell you from first-hand experience in uh, in addition to teaching, as I've said before, I'm also part of a company where we do social media, uh, websites, photography, all of that. And therefore, uh, Google Plus is one of the social networks that, that we use for companies. It, it, it really does work, especially the way I showed you with communities, going into Google Plus communities to reach an audience that really cares. So the more you use it, the better you get at it. And uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. If you forget what you did, uh, I mean, if you don't use it on a regular basis, you're going to forget what you did unless you go back and watch the videos. But uh, you want to use the social networks on a regular basis. Today we're going to look at first setting up Google Webmaster Tools and then Google Analytics more in depth. So on our web browser, let's open your web browser if you don't have one open yet go to your web browser and let's go to google.com slash webmasters google.com slash webmasters now if you haven't heard in the last I would say three days maybe two days um, Google made a huge huge change uh, Google we know it as the company behind Google Search, Google Analytics, Google Glass, Google Android, all of this stuff. Well, guess what? Google has created a brand new company which will be their parent company and they've called it Alphabet. So now Alphabet is the company above Google. Alphabet is the parent company that will then put CEOs to manage their kingdoms in Google Search, in Android, in um, Google Glass, Google Autonomous, um, Droids, and whatever they're working on. All of that crazy stuff that Google is working on now, they're all part of the larger company of Alphabet. And so, of course, on social media, people had a field day making fun of that because that's kind of a dumb name, and it really doesn't explain what the company is or does. You would only know that it exists because it's related to Google. Now, how many of you had heard of that news, the brand new Alphabet company? Only a couple, very few people. So um, for the general public, it's not going to really matter. For investors, um, t things change a little bit. But for us, it's still not really going to matter. But it's interesting to, to know that, that Google had to decide to make a brand new parent, parent company and install some new CEOs and such on their subsidiaries. But for us, what matters is we're going to talk about Google Webmaster Tools, now known as Google Search Console. It used to be called Webmaster Tools, and now it's called Search Console. And then we'll talk about Google Analytics. So before this class, how many of you had heard of Google Webmaster Tools? All right, not too many. How many of you, of you had heard of Google Analytics? More people. Okay, so we'll compare and contrast the two but it's important to have both set up. Google Webmaster Tools, or Google Analytics, when we get to it, second, is uh, this screen that allows us to see so much data about our, our website traffic, all of this traffic that Google is collecting. Google lets us see it and manipulate it and download it and use it. So uh, we'll be able to look at that. That's Google Analytics. It's a lot of deep data, such as how much time that people spend on your site, what web browser they use, the most popular day of the week, all of this really advanced data. The other side of the coin is Google Webmaster Tools, also now known as Google Search Console. I have to get used to saying that because I've been using Webmaster Tools for years. Now it's Search Console. Basically what Search Console is, it's one side of the coin, and what this coin is about basically is checking the, the health and the status of your website, and so if, if we set up these webmaster tools, we'll be able to see 
what are the keywords that uh, led people to our site, educating us on the tips and tricks, the do's and the don'ts that Google wants us to follow so that our site is, is found. And if we're having trouble, we've got help, actually, and we can call a phone number to talk to some a real person at Google if we've got this set up. So that's part of what we'll be talking about. Google Webmaster Tools, Google Analytics, and a couple of other related products. So I'm um, just going to skip through this video a little bit if it lets me. Um, you can watch it on your the own. Internet. Basically, it's going to uh, the video just talks about you want traffic to your website. Well, if we optimize your website with the Google tools, we'll be able to stand out from the rest of your competitors. And so you'll be able to get the advice. You'll be able to check on your page. Is it working? Is it reaching the right people? This is all free to set up. We can set up Google Webmaster Tools, Google Search Console, Google Analytics, and a bunch of these others for free. There is a paid component of it, which we'll talk about later, but we'll be able to use the free, um, the free features. In order for this to work, as I said last week, we need to have our login information. And so we have two types of login. We have the login to log into our site to make changes. The login where I can go in to add a new picture, change a color, etc. That's one kind of login. The other login is to, pro is to log into our provider. That would be something like Bluehost, GoDaddy, Yahoo, Cox at Home, whatever. The company that provides you with your, with your web services, your domain name and your hosting. Either or, either one of those logins will work for us to set this up. So if you don't know which kind you have, no problem. We're, we'll deal with that. And so what I'm going to do is, when I do this class, uh, I talk about this concept in general, and then we have a little time to help you individually if you need it. Because I can show a way to do it here, but oftentimes, most of the time, when you come in, everyone's got different ways to access their website and such. So I build in some time to help people individually if they would like that. So the first thing we need to do here is click sign into Search Console. And we're going to use the same sign in, the same login information from last week. Remember we created Google Plus and uh, some of us created a brand new account and some of us used our existing Gmail. So again, either or. You can create a brand new account here. I don't recommend it if you created the Google Plus account with us last time keep all of that consolidated, therefore you have less logins to deal with and all the information can be shared within your accounts. Uh, we have a create button, but I'm going to log in as, uh, as, as I did last week with Google+. So take a moment to log in and then we'll go on. All right, does anyone need a little help signing in? Now, because I've got uh, this account, uh, I'm using the account that I used for Google+. Plus. Yeah, I think so. All right, just one moment. So because this account is set up with my Google+, Plus from last week, I get the notifications at the top right that I've got some activity on Google+. Plus. Uh, so that's pretty helpful. It's all tied together. 
Um, so let's take a moment to make sure we've logged in and then we'll proceed. All right, so um, I've got an account here, which probably most of us see the same thing here. If you've already set this up before, it'll look a little different. But I've got here where it says Welcome to Search Console. How many of you see the Welcome to Search Console? How many of you see something else, such as your website? A couple of people, maybe. So get the data, tools, and diagnostics needed to create and maintain Google-friendly websites and mobile apps. To get started, just add your site below, site or app. So there's a video again from a moment ago. Uh, some of the things that we get from setting this up is that we'll be able to analyze clicks. So when someone does a Google search, we can see that data. We can see what words people clicked on and so forth. We can get alerts for critical errors. I want to know <coughs> when Google detects something bad on my website. So that's one of the benefits here. And test whether Google can successfully understand your content. So the search engines um, are trying to give us, or trying to give the user a page full of results that is relevant to what they've searched for. The search engines are getting smarter. They're still mechanical based on technology and algorithms. Uh, so they still have a way to go to really understand what, what we think as people and what we're searching for. But it's all about the content. It's not about the bells and whistles of the site and other tricks and such. It's about what's on the site. What have you added to the site? What have you written? Is it written well? Is it content that people care about? That's a deeper discussion for the SEO class. But what I'm saying here is by setting this up, we will get this head start compared to our competitors who have never set this stuff up before. This is a little advanced, but we can set this up to also track an app. So if later on we have an app for our website or our online presence, we can then also um, track data about it here. That's why it calls it a property. It used to call it add a website, but now we can, you can add an app, an Android app, or a, um, or a website. So it's a property. Here, under the name, it asks, and the address, it says, type in your name. This is one of the confusing things that it doesn't tell you right away. But Google can track your traffic on, on your website um, in about four different ways. And what I mean by that is the address. When you visit a website, raise your hand, how many of you type www.thewebsite? as opposed to how many of you type thewebsite.com. So how many of you type the www part? A few people. How many of you don't type the www part? A few people. More people, it seems. Google tracks both of those as different kind of data because on a technical level, there are different subdomains. Again, it's, it's technical, don't worry. But basically, Google is going to track your data a little differently on both your www site and your non-ww site because some people type victor.com, and some people type www.victor.com. So what that matters for us is we're going to need to add our site here twice, the www version and the non-ww version. doesn't matter which one we add first, and I'll give you a suggestion. But I said there's four ways. Because have you ever visited a website and you notice the address says HTTPS? HTTPS is a secure connection. So if your website also has a secure connection like your shopping cart or other security certificate, maybe you have an SSL certificate, that's basically the ability for your site to have security, HTTPS. If you don't buy an SSL certificate, you're not going to automatically have HTTPS. And that's important if you're a bank, if you're an online merchant, if, you're, if you've got sensitive user information, you want to invest in buying what is known as a an SSL certificate. So if my site also has HTTPS, I need to add that version of my site, HTTPS, www.victor.com, and HTTPS, victor.com. 
I'm going to start off with the non WW version. And we'll add the other one in a, in a little bit. So in the address here, HTTP colon slash slash whatever the name of your website is. If you don't have a website, you can make it up. You won't get too far, but you can make it up or you can just wait when you do have a website. But I'm going to suggest we add the non WWW version first because that's the most common. People are used to not typing the WW more and more and more. Of course, still millions of people, hundreds of million, will still type the WW portion. And that's what we're going to add both in a moment. Click Add Property. This next screen here may be a little different for different people. That's okay. Now what I need to do is confirm that that is my website. <laughs> Just like in the real world if someone asks me, where do you live? And I say, I live on that three-story mansion in La Jolla. They'll only believe me until I can actually walk up to that mansion and unlock the door and walk in. So here, Google is not going to believe me that this is my actual website until I can provide some verification. And there's several ways to do it. There's the hard way to the not so hard way to the not so so hard way. They're all relatively complicated, but that's what this class is for. In my case, it's saying recommended method. Recommended HTML file upload. So again, I'm probably gonna, uh, I'm happy to help people individually in just a moment after I explain these methods. But if this makes sense to you, you could try to do it, or you could wait for me to help you with it. But what this is saying is, if you download this file, your, your very own unique Google HTML file, and then upload it to your website, and then click Verify, you've verified your site. This is to prevent your competitor from setting up Google Webmaster Tools to see your traffic. And this is also to prevent you from setting this up against your competitors. Only you should have the access to log in to your site, like I asked you to bring your login information, to verify. This is one method. If you know what this means, an FTP upload, to upload your HTML file to your server, to do the file manager, or FileZilla, or what other ones? CyberDuck. There's different ways to upload. If you know what any of that means, you can try it. If not, I'll help you out in a bit. This is one way. We've got alternate methods here. HTML tag, domain name provider, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager. HTML tag is another viable way to do this, which is copy the meta tag below and paste it into your site's home page. It should go in the head section before the first body section. So if that makes sense to you, you're going to copy this line of code, you're going to edit the home page of your site, you're going to edit the code of your home page of your site, and paste this code into your code, and click verify here. Then Google will check the home page to find that code. If it finds it, you're verified. If it doesn't, you're not verified. This is the method where it requires your login information to edit your site. This one over here recommended is requires the the login for your provider. We've got domain name provider which I've tried to do before and I've had 15 years experience on this and it's still complicated to me. So I wouldn't even try this one myself. Domain name provider. This is simply going to give you instructions to do some voodoo over on your provider. It's just going to tell you, here's some 12 instructions to log into GoDaddy, to log into Two Cows, to log into Bluehost, and then follow these 20 steps, because each provider is a little different. I would not bother with this one. For me, also, it's complicated. I would personally do either the HTML file upload or the HTML tag. This one might be a moot point, but it could be doable if you've already got Google Analytics set up you could vouch for Google Search Console with Google Analytics. So that's, that's another way. 
you, you should confirm that this is all set up and then click verify. Your well, this one you're going to need to use the software that you use to edit your site. So if I've got a WordPress site, I could log into WordPress and then edit my site that way. Um, so this is basically using the, the site editing software. And lastly, Google Tag Manager, which is similar to if you've got Google Tag Manager set up, then you'll be able to verify with this. If you don't, it's a moot point. So again, you, you have to have those two set up. So what we're going to do is uh, take a, a couple of minutes here. I'm going to pause the recording. We'll take a couple of minutes, and if you need some individual help, call me over. I'll help you out. I want to get as many people set up on this as possible. And then on the next screen, I'll show what's the point of all of this.